Hi guys, uh, welcome back to my channel. I'm super excited to be here and I'm super excited that you guys are here as well. Um, go ahead and smash the like button. Where is it over here? I don't remember. Over here, over here. And uh, don't forget to subscribe. Um, I'm going to be posting new videos every week. I'm going to try to get them out on Fridays, but most likely on Sundays. I am an adult, so I have to go. <laughs> I have to do things um, during the week. So. so this series is going to, well, this series is mostly going to be about web programming and web fundamentals in general. Um, hopefully by the end of it, you will be able to host your own static web page um, for free, hopefully. I guess I haven't used all those credits yet, uh, but uh, we'll see. Um, so this video, this one uh, we are making right here, <laughs> it's going to mostly be about um, the, uh, it's going to be, uh, oof, I already fudged it up. <laughs> Don't worry about it. So this video is going to be a good primer for the rest of the series and it's going to give you the base, basic knowledge that you need to get through programming on the web and have uh, for you to get like a solid understanding of how it works. So enjoy! So this video is mostly going to be about um, the basics of web programming and kind of giving you a good background as to what uh, it all entails. Um, Web programming in general is always growing and always expanding. Since there are always new features being added, uh, this uh, this set of slides um, is going to be available uh, on GitHub, uh, which I'll link below. Um, so that way you can uh, reference the resources uh, that I talked about. Um, I'm trying to think if there's anything else I need to mention before diving in. Um, nope, doesn't feel like it, so let's go right in. All right, so there are going to be eight topics that we're going to cover today. Um, they are HTML, uh, CSS, JavaScript, uh, service workers, local databases, polyfills, uh, prefixes, and lighthouse audits. These are all very, very important in order to create a very efficient and very um, user-friendly uh, web page, whether it be static or even like um, a web page for a web app. Um, over on the right, you'll see a diagram of a general architecture of the, of the general architecture of most browsers and how they kind of operate with our modern technologies. We'll go over in a later slide of how it all actually uh, works together in unison. Um, but for right now, this is just kind of like the overview of what it looks like. All right, so HTML stands for Hypertext uh, Markup Language, and it is used to tell your browser how a desired web page layout should be outlined um, using HTML tags. Uh, some common tags that are used across all um, web pages are body, header, footer, nav, div, main, if people remember to use it. Um, another one I forgot to mention is head. So there's head and then there's header and the head typically like has all of your metadata and um, it also has uh, style sheets defined, um, prefetching, um, lots of other fun stuff in there. <laughs> we'll go over that stuff later. A good resource uh, to jump into if you can't wait for my videos is uh, W3Schools, um, which is uh, linked in my slides. Alright, so CSS stands for uh, Cascading Style Sheets, and it is used to bring designs to life by telling your browser how an HTML outlined um, layout should display through color, font, size, and position attributes. Um, some common attributes that are used within CSS are color, font size, uh, background color, padding, margins. Um, typically, you can define like the width and height of different uh, divs, or um, you can do different articles, uh, things of that nature. Um, there's also this thing called uh, hex codes, um, which can give you like specific uh, colorings uh, uh, or yeah, specific colors as opposed to just the predefined like gray, black, white, uh, green colors that HTML has predefined. Um, another like a resource for that is W3Schools as well. All right, so JavaScript, or JS for short, um, uh, ha basically handles the functionality of uh, modern day uh, web pages and web apps. 
Um, some of the uh, some of the functionality can be handled uh, directly through HTML um, elements without uh, having to define JavaScript, but it doesn't really allow for uh, easy control of uh, certain aspects of the uh, of the calls that you're wanting to make. Um, so that's why uh, adding JavaScript in there is important. Um, some things to note, uh, when you are handling events um, through JavaScript, you should remember that there's an event.prevent uh, default, um, which uh, uh, disables uh, predetermined uh, behaviors that, HTML, uh, that the browser has defined for the HTML. Uh, you can also log the event and log the event.target, which is where the event um, came from in the first place. Service workers, woohoo! All right, uh, SW for short, uh, manages the memory on your browser um, and allows for better efficiency within your web page as well as uh, offline functionalities. Um, this is a much newer uh, concept and feature within browsers um, as opposed to like just normal HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. Um, some important event listeners that you will need to take note of are um, register, install, and activate. Uh, fetch is another one that you can use to um, basically intercept and uh, return different data uh, for offline capabilities. Um, I recommend using Workbox if you have no idea how to do this stuff. Um, it is a great place to start without all the headache of writing your own. All right, so now we're at local databases. And believe it or not, browsers do have databases built straight into them. Uh, service workers, as well as JavaScript on your page can access them. Um, currently, there are two types that I know of. Um, one is IndexedDB, which is a NoSQL implementation of a local database. And there's WebSQL, which is obviously like an SQL-based um, <sighs> database. Um, these are super amazing in handling um, offline capabilities as well, which your service worker can uh, use to return the data that I was talking about previously um, when intercepting the uh, calls uh, through fetch event. Um, two places to look, look up more details about these two are MDM and uh, tutorials point, which are uh, going to be linked in my slides. Now we're at polyfills. Um, I highly recommend once you get more advanced to just use TypeScript, <laughs> but um, <laughs> that's not the case right now. So um, there are a few ways to add polyfills into your JavaScript so that uh, to make your uh, web pages more uh, browser independent. Uh, this means that the code that you write will run. Um, on very other browsers and not just Chrome, <laughs> which a lot of developers run into uh, because they don't realize they have to do this, um, especially new ones. Um, the best way to handle this kind of uh, use case is to uh, basically use um, something like React, Vue, or Angular and compile, well, transpile with Babel, Webpack, and TypeScript. Prefixes allow uh, you to write styles that are also uh, browser independent, just like uh, polyfills, but it's for CSS rather than uh, JavaScript. Um, most of the time, the attributes that are available typically are uh, typically work with Chrome. Uh, all the time, but um, when you try to do something in Safari, it's completely, it, like the behavior is probably gonna be completely different or it just, it just doesn't even exist and you have to add the prefix to it in order for it to even uh, register on Safari. Um, a good way to handle this uh, in the future uh, is to use something like SAS, LESS, or, uh, C, or SCS, SCSS, <laughs> sorry, uh, using Vue, Angular, or React.
Lighthouse audits are probably going to be the most uh, important thing I discuss in this uh, video, uh, just because they honestly um, help a lot with uh, debugging and fixing bottlenecks within a uh, web page. Uh, just uh, some understanding of like, just to get you to understand like what this means, uh, so or how this even impacts. Uh, your web page. Uh, research has sh shown that users are more likely to navigate away from a page uh, if it takes more than seven seconds to uh, load anything to the page, and if it takes more than 800 milliseconds to even uh, trigger anything, any kind of response, uh, the web page is seen as buggy. Um, in order to track down these kinds of uh, issues, uh, Lighthouse audits uh, exist um, on Chrome's uh, DevTools. What you see now is the general architecture of how browsers interact with all of the uh, working mechanisms uh, uh, I've discussed uh, so far within this video. Um, so as you can tell, like everybody uses a browser, right? And the browser communicates with a service worker, which the service worker uh, communicates with your local database as well as the cache in memory. Um, it can go in into your cache and fetch some stuff to render to your browser while um, you're waiting to get some kind of a response. It can also talk to um, external servers um, and uh, respond to your browser as well. Um, it's a very cool uh, piece of technology that has uh, really, really uh, grown within the past few years. This diagram actually was done uh, completely by me, uh, but I did make one little mistake. I forgot to draw an arrow between the servers and browser. Uh, you can completely bypass the service worker if you really, really desire to. Um, I don't recommend it just because uh, you won't have any good offline capabilities, but this is really, really awesome and I love it so much. That wraps up my video on uh, my primer for the introduction to programming on the web. Um, if you have any questions, you can inbox me at hello at pumpkinspicelatte.org. Um, I don't always check that inbox, so if you do, <laughs> Um, please be patient with my responses. Um, you can also leave a comment below. Um, don't forget to subscribe. And I'm also going to link the uh, slides um, on GitHub. Thank you guys so much for watching. Um, I'm super excited to continue making these videos. And uh, <laughs> I promise next week's video is going to be way more exciting than this one. Um, until next time, ciao. This video specifically is going to be about um, the fundamentals. Oof, this is bad.